Hello everyone. Um, I've had so many messages from people asking what my favorite brushes are, but especially I get questions asking me what brushes I recommend for lettering. So I thought I would do a video kind of showing you these favorite brushes that I have and let you know also that I have um, created a resource page on my website, um, southernadornmentsdecor.com. And at the top of the page, you can click the resource button and it has links to these brushes and also just regular brushes like these that I use just for painting uh, the door hangers. So tell me hello as you're coming in. Hopefully I'm catching a few of you guys like on your lunch break at work and maybe you can join in with me and watch. Help me make sure I've got the volume turned down here. I don't wanna hear it. I just wanna be able to read your comments. What's everybody up to today? Counting down to the weekend so you can celebrate Christmas. <laughs> hey, Mary. Okay, so these brushes are called Crafter's Choice. Crafter's Choice. And the set that I have linked on my resource page on my website um, comes with a set of four. And there are four different sizes. There's a size two, four, six, and eight. The two is the smallest and the eight is the largest. Let me get close to the camera so you can kind of see these, which my daughter has ruined the first one. See how fuzzy that one is? She ruined that one, <laughs> and I'm not too happy about it. So I'm going to have to reorder a set of these because I love this small one for doing lettering that is really small, and this one is great for doing large lettering. So the different sizes, see how they're filbert tips? Filbert means they've kind of got that nice rounded edge but they're also nice and thick, so they'll hold plenty of paint. Hey, Ashley. So, if you want to buy these brushes, head over to my website, southernadornmentsdecor.com. Click on the link at the top of the page that says resources, and there will be a link right there where you can click to buy these brushes. There's also links for, like, the jigsaw that I recommend, um, sander that I recommend. It tells you what kind of wood I use because I get that question a lot, too. So, if you want that information, head on over to my website. Okay, um, for this one, I'm writing Santa stops here. And so I have to think about, okay, um, how big do I want my lettering to be? This smallest one, the size two, would be way too small because the writing would probably be as skinny as like these lines here. And I want it to be bolder than that. So I may step up to using the size, let me look. There's a size four, but that's still pretty skinny. So I'm gonna go with the third size, which the third, I don't know, four fingers. The third size, which is number six. Number six. And um, this one needs washing out better than, because I've kind of ruined it. It didn't um, get washed out real good. But the, oh, I was going to tell you, the way my daughter ruined this other one, the one that was real fuzzy, is I think she like took it and jabbed it like this in the bottom of my water cup or something. And so it caused all of the bristles to kind of fray out in a weird direction. And I've tried my best to reshape this brush by washing it and reshaping it, and it's just not happening. Hi, Kristen. <clears throat> you guys say hi to me as you come on. Unless I'm like Facebook friends with you, it doesn't usually tell me who is watching. So I love it when you guys like say hi to me. That way I can see your names. So, all right. Um, right, I'm just gonna write Santa stops here on this one here, and I'm using the size six. If you're scared to do lettering, I recommend that you practice like on cardboard or cardstock or something like that and kind of practice writing it two or three times before you write it on your door hanger. That will kind of give you a little bit of confidence and help you kind of figure out what style you want to write it in. <clears throat> As you can see, I'm in a different location today. I'm in my husband's man cave. <laughs> hi, Lisa. Hi, Rhonda. Um, I cleared out like a corner and put a... Um, what do you call this? Card table in here. And all of my supplies are in here just because everything was kind of topsy-turvy in my um, living room or my dining room with the Christmas tree and everything. And I was tired of seeing everything piled up. So I thought in here I can actually shut and lock the door. This is a closet. <laughs> but I can shut and lock the door and that way my two-year-old can't barge in in the middle of my video. And you can't hear my husband in the background. Hey, Heather. Hi, Becky. Merry Christmas to you, too. Okay, this is going to kind of be like funky lettering. Like, parts of it are going to be exaggerated, kind of big, and then, uh, you know, kind of like curly. And it's also going to have what's called uh, serifs. See the little lines at the bottoms of the letters? Those are called serifs, in case you're wondering. I 
kind of stop talking sometimes when I'm painting letters because I don't want to misspell want to misspell anything. I love doing these big curvy S's. And the reason these filbert brushes are so good for lettering is because that curved tip on these will help you get a nice smooth um, letter. So like um, when I stop right here at the end of this S, see how it's nice and smooth because you lift up your brush. It's not got like the bristly uh, marks. Like I said, this one's just gonna be nice and whimsical and kind of funky. Santa stops here. And I like to put the little curves in the E too when I'm doing like a whimsical letter. Or I might not do the letter straight up and down. I might kind of tilt it a little bit like I did with this R. And then when I um, finish out the R, I will like curve the letter kind of back up into itself. Creates more of a whimsical look. Oh, thank you. Merry Christmas, Kristen. <laughs> thank you. And if you, if you feel like, you know, it's a little streaky and you didn't quite get a smooth um, letter just dip your brush back in the paint and just carefully go back over the same area again and that'll smooth it out okay so we've got santa stops here on this one i'm going to do another one real quick um let me grab it i was sitting it over here to dry i can't do the entire thing for you guys because i don't want the person it's for just in case they're on facebook and watch my videos i don't want them to realize it's for them so i'm just going to kind of do part of it to show you the different sizes of the brushes and then um I'll uh, leave some of the names off so it's not obvious. Lacey, hey girl, you just got to try on your... Oh, good. You need more practice. Well, that's okay. I started this about three years ago and um, I've come a long way. <laughs> I posted a before and after picture a while back. It was like the very first snowman door hanger I ever did. Actually, it was the very first door hanger ever that I had ever done. And looking back on it now, it's so funny looking because <laughs> um, yes, Kristen, these are a great, great gift idea. Um, because now my snowmen look so much cuter than they did before, but okay. Um, I'm going to wash this one out and I'm going to switch to this largest brush, which is the eight. Now it is about, it's probably a little more than a quarter inch wide. So I'm going to be writing Mimi's blessings in the middle of this heart. And since this is a very large area, that's why I'm using the large brush. If I were doing like three or four words in the middle, I would probably go down a size. But since I'm only doing two words, I'm going to use the largest largest size brush. I feel like I'm tripping over my words today. <clears throat> okay. Sorry, I'm getting quiet again. I have to concentrate. <laughs> okay. Now, blessings is a small is a longer word than Mimi's, so I may actually switch down because. Um, you kind of just have to play around with it. Like I said, just practice on a cardboard, piece of cardboard, and see how wide, because actually the letters will come out a little wider than the brush themselves. Oh, I missed a comment. Hang on, let me go back. What do you clean your brushes with? Soap and water? Actually, just water. I should probably use soap, but I'm lazy. <laughs> and can you pin all of your favorite brushes? Yes. Um, actually, I mentioned this at the beginning of the video, so if any of you guys missed it, these brushes and also my other favorite brushes that are like this that I just use for, you know, different designs and highlights and stuff. I've got them all linked on a new page on my website called Resources. 
So go to southernadornmentsdecor.com and click on resources at the top and it will give you the links to all of these brushes that I recommend. It'll also give you, show you the exact kind of wood that I buy and it will show you the kind of jigsaw, the kind of sander, all of those things. All of It's like a list of my favorite things that I recommend and all of them are things that I actually use. So um, I won't recommend anything that I don't can't put my experience behind. Okay, so I've switched down to the size six. That's the second largest size in this set. And I'm gonna write blessings. And the reason I switched down was because I knew blessings was a longer word and I didn't want to run out of room. And I'll show you up close in a moment kind of the difference in the uh, width of the writing. If you'll notice, I'm frequently re-dipping my brush in the paint. It just helps everything go smoother. And this one is almost too big. You kind of got to fit it in there. And you can go back if you want this to look more like calligraphy and add thicker downstrokes. Like I had said, everywhere that you would normally bring your brush down, thicken that up just a little bit. There we go. And I may go back and add some little white highlights, but let me show you up close kind of the difference in the size. So on this top one, I use the size eight, and then on the bottom, I use the size six. It's a very subtle difference in the size of the brush. Um, I mean, in the size of the lettering. So it's probably not gonna be obvious to anybody who like immediately looks at it that you use two different sizes, two different sizes of brushes to do that lettering, but it makes a big difference in being able to um, determine the size of your lettering. Happy birthday, Allison, <laughs> and you'll craft if you, it's your birthday, and you'll craft if you want to. I love that, even with a horrible cold. Yeah, um, sometimes, well, I was sick a couple of weeks ago, and I was still crafting even while sick. It was kind of a nice distraction. You wish you could get, um, Lisa, have you checked on Pinterest? There are a bunch of free um, templates for hand lettering. I haven't ever thought about doing practice letter sheets, but I'm not sure if I would know how to create those. I'd have to figure that out, but maybe in the future I can do that. Okay, um, I'm gonna do a couple of the names on here, but not all of them because I don't wanna give it away, whoever it's for. And I'm gonna switch to white paint <clears throat> because the white will show up better on top of this gray. It will like pop. And I normally would probably use my smallest brush, but like I said, my two-year-old ruined this one. So I'm gonna try to do this with the size four, which is the second smallest, and we'll see if, sorry about that, I got a call in the middle of the video. Okay, so let's just write, we're gonna write Justin on this one right here. And I'll show you, this is the size four. And you can do some pretty skinny letters with this size four. You can do even skinnier with the size two, but. If, you had a, if I had a long name, a really long name, I might have to use the size too. But I just love how these filbert brushes hold plenty of paint and they um, just glide smoothly on the canvas. And I love these little grippers. See how they've got the nice little rubber grippers right here? Um, and let's do one on this side, let me see. I've got my names written down here, so I'll make sure and get them all in the in the right order. Your blankie's not in here. <laughs> Go, yeah, it's in the living room, I think. <laughs> I'll come find it later. <laughs> oh goodness. Uh, let's write Audrey on this one. She thinks I've got her blankie in here because she was in here earlier. I thought by coming in here, I would get some peace and quiet and be able to paint um, without her underfoot, but I was sorely mistaken. She likes to be right underneath me, which I guess that's payback because my mom always said that no matter where she was at, I would bring my toys and play right underneath her. So 
Sherry, are you ever almost finished with one and you're just not happy with the way it looks and you get aggravated? Aggravated to the point that you sand all your painting off. Um, I've never gotten aggravated to where I've sanded it. Well, no, I take that back. I got aggravated once because I had painted something and I had painted it. It was my mistake, honestly, because I had misread what the customer wanted and um, I didn't paint it right so I, I realized that and I painted over it and started over again and I still messed it up. I used the correct color but I used the wrong pattern. So after painting over it the second time I realized I was going to have to sand it the third time. And so um, yeah I've done that before and it is very frustrating but you gotta just gotta go with it. Okay so let me show you up close how skinny see how skinny that lettering is that's the size four. And then now I'm just using one of the regular brushes. This is just a round tip brush and I'm dipping it in the black. And I'm just gonna kind of wiggle it along the outline, outlines of these hearts to kind of make them stand out. Not to mention this covers any sort of little imperfections where your paint sort of got over on the heart from the other color or whatever. It just makes everything look better. And the black kind of accents the white better and makes the white stand out. Kathy. Oh, thank you, Kathy. You're so sweet. I'm actually getting ready to leave for Florida on Christmas Day. We're so excited. We go every year this time of year and stay for about two weeks. My grandmother and my mom and dad both have winter homes down near Fort Myers. And so we are going to be going down there until after the new year. And then my husband's going to be running in the Disney World Marathon um, <clears throat> on January the 7th. So, I will still be doing videos, but it might not be painting videos. Um, I thought about doing maybe a, a, vi a cooking video or something because we cook a lot while we're on vacation. We don't go out to eat a whole lot. And so, my grandma makes her famous homemade donuts every year. And so, I thought, well, we might do a video on doing homemade donuts. Amanda, you first learned to paint letters with concealer and high shadow makeup brushes. Elf brand, a dollar each. They were short and helped a lot. That's interesting. I've never thought about using makeup brushes. Did anybody see my picture of my seven-year-old painted up as the Grinch? I painted his face to look like the Grinch. And I actually used these same brushes that I paint my door hangers with. I didn't use door hanger paint. Like, I used face paint. And if anybody needs a good set of face paint, I put the affiliate link in the comments of that post because that face paint is the bomb. It is so awesome. It, um, like, you know how some face paint feels slimy and like it feels goopy and then it makes your face hot and kind of itchy? This face paint does not do that. Like, after you put it on, you forget that you have it on. Just like I have on makeup now, I don't feel the makeup on my face. Like, it feels smooth and dry. That's how this face paint is, and it lasts a long time. Like, I did my daughter a chicken face. I did my son's zombie faces for Halloween, and um, then I did him Grinch, and we still have a ton of that makeup. Like, it's going to probably last me three or four years, that whole palette is. I know, honey. I'll be out in a minute. Do you miss me? I miss you. <laughs> I miss you, too. I'll be out in a minute. Now I'm just doing a cute little dotted wiggly line design around the edge. <laughs> I'll come out in a minute, okay? I'm doing a video. <laughs> uh, Lindsay, the kind of brushes that I'm using, the brand is Crafter's Choice, and they're called the they're a filbert tip brush. The pack that I have linked on my website under the resource list, you go to southernadornmentsdecor.com. And at the top of the page, click the resource button, and there'll be there'll be a link directly to this exact set on Amazon. It comes with four brushes. The sizes are two, four, six, and eight. The two's the smallest, which is this one, and um, they're awesome. I use them every time I do lettering. So as you can see, we've got the lettering on this one. I've still got to do all the rest of the names, but I'm not going to do that on the video because, like I said, I don't want to give away who this is for. Um, I also wanted to tell you guys something cool. So this past month. I can't concentrate with her knocking. Let that baby in. Okay, I will. Charlie, they want you to come in. Can you come in without messing anything up? Okay. Okay, don't knock anything over. 
But anyways, like I was saying, and don't, don't touch that. My camera will fall. <laughs> yep. That's why we don't put two year olds in here. Come here. Come sit with me so you don't mess anything up. I was going to tell you guys in my virtual paint party group this past, um, Monday night, we painted it Monday night. It was so neat because Facebook now has this option where I can bring people up on camera with me. And so after we got done painting, I asked if anybody wanted to come up and share their paint, like their creation. And so I was able to bring my friend Deborah, who's in our group up on the screen and our faces were side by side and we were talking to each other just like it was FaceTime. It was so cool. So if any of you guys want to try that next month, I would love if you join my virtual paint party group. I'm getting ready to announce very soon what the design's going to be. It's going to be something kind of Valentine-ish, mm, but it could also be up any time of year, really. <laughs> Thank you, Lisa. Say hi, Lisa. Hi, Lisa. She's up here. You gotta look at that one. <laughs> hi. Hi, Lisa. <laughs> but anyways, I think it would be so neat if uh, we got more people to do that each month because it makes it feel more like I'm not... See, she popped up the little hearts. Uh, yep, yeah, Amanda says you're precious. My precious. You're precious. <laughs> she knows it too. Um, but anyways, I think it would be so neat because it's not just I'm me talking and talking and talking and talking and talking and just a minute and reading your comments. Like it was really neat to be able to see somebody else's face and put a face with the name and be able to kind of look at what they just created while I was painting. And it's just been so fun. So if you want to join my virtual paint party group uh, in January, I will be announcing very soon what we're going to be painting. But the link for that's also on the website. Just click live paint party group. So I'm going to hop off here and probably put her down for a nap and eat some lunch. I will see you guys probably again one more time before Christmas. And then the, I will get on Facebook live again probably one more time before Christmas. And uh, then I will probably be in Florida and coming live on, from Florida. So <laughs> we'll see. Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> we'll see you guys later. Have a Merry Christmas. Have a Merry Christmas.